Are you living the Delaware Beach lifestyle? You can't live at the beach and do nothing. This up-and-coming year-round area has lots to offer. Find out where to eat, play, and serve. Living the ultimate dream. Hey guys, in today's episode, you are going to meet Kathy Galvin. Now, uh, for those of you in the 302 area lifestyle, you I'm sure you have seen, we have all sorts of clubs, events, arts and craft shows, uh, a big world of crocheting and knitting and other painting endeavors. And today you're going to meet someone with 20 years of experience of crocheting and multitude years in crafting. Uh, she has come from a corporate New York life and became a stay-at-home mom. Now, she also leads the business, uh, Moms and Business International Leader uh, of Central and South Delaware chapter. Uh, she's also a member of the Chamber of Commerce in Middleton and, of course, has just been on all sorts of things and is really blowing up. Uh, back in 2018, she launched uh, some of her, uh, her website, Craft Central, and since then, is uh, a leader in uh, hosting events, teaching people how to start crocheting or knitting or doing other crafts, and uh, is becoming a hub for other artists to share their artwork uh, with the community. So without f the further ado, guys, I ramble on too much sometimes, but Kathy, here we go. All right, welcome to the 302 Lifestyle Beach Podcast. Uh, your host, Dylan, here, uh, sponsored by That Guy with the Broom and Urban Float. <laughs> Here we are with Kathy uh, Galvin. Uh, Kathy is just so amazing and just kind of getting to know her a little bit. She has a lot of amazing stuff going on right now. Uh, Kathy, I won't ramble on too much, but uh, Reader's Digest finalist, uh, first state <laughs> favorite in 2019. Uh, you've got the online craft fair haven and um, other uh, stuff with uh, getting a hold of you. But uh, you were also featured in the Delaware Today in March. <laughs> and how, how in the world uh, does somebody get into this? And uh, what is it that you do that people can, um, can get to know you with this? What, what? Um, well, the way that I got into it is just a passion for the arts, really, and crafts. Um, I, I am a crocheter mostly by trade. My, um, it was something that I grew up with and my grandmother had taught me how to do it. And when I started my business, it was really just my love for that that got it started. And then it sort of morphed into other um, crafting areas as well. Um, but I, you know, I teach crochet vir virtually now um, because I love to spread the, the love of crochet because that's my favorite number one craft. Um, but I also do um, painting crafts and I also do wood decor. I do um, so many things, just anything that will pretty much um, spark a love of the handmade arts. Um, that, that's basically my mission and passion is to spread that love to the masses because I feel as if um, we sort of lost um, a little bit of that with the electronic age and that kind of thing. So i um, trying to sort of revive that and, um, and hopefully people will um, love it as much well, as Kathy, I do. Kathy, I hate to do this to you. Uh, I just lost you. And then I popped back in. I don't know. <laughs> I think you were talking the whole time. <laughs> Hold on. Here. Oh, I was. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's do this again here. Okay, so we're going to start here. Uh, we just lost some internet. Kathy, uh, I, I think I saw one of your uh, pictures, and um, you have got all kinds of stuff going on. You're, like, basically becoming famous overnight with uh, everything that you've been doing over the past uh, couple years here. And tell us a little bit about – I know you just uh, talked, but we lost the internet. So how, how did you get involved with um, – art and uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Um, it was something that I grew up with. Um, you know, any anybody of any age of any walk of life can really do um, crafts and everybody is creative in their own way. Um, and basically, I, I built my idea on 
uh, the fact that I love crochet and I've done it for 25 years now. And um, I had started with the idea that I was just going to teach crochet and sell, sell crochet items. Um, but there was a need for uh, people to get back to basics um, because of, you know, the electronic age and that kind of thing. So um, I turned the company into a lot of craft events and um, painting um, events and all kinds of um, make and takes uh, just so people can, um, you know, get, find an escape and, uh, mm. and sort of, you know, relieve their stress. And it's something that um, people love to do. And it's, as I said, man, woman, child, any age, any walk of life can do it. Um, so it was something that I wanted to, um, to put my passion out there for people to, um, to, to love as well. Um, I'm hoping that, that the handmade arts will certainly make a comeback and, um, and really, you know, people will love to do it as much as I do. It's, it's, um, there's, there's a certain, um, satisfaction in something that you've made with your own hands. Mm. Um, and, and it's just, um, an amazing feeling. It's not just an item. It's something that comes from your heart and your soul and your own creativity. So um, I'm hoping that other people will certainly love to do it as much as I do. And I love to spread that love. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And I think there is like a, a big comeback in that. I mean, even as a company uh, standpoint, we've done a lot of uh, just these past couple of years, even with everything going on, we've done a lot of company uh, like hangouts or paint nights where we, you know, just go out and we try to uh, do some arts and crafts. And I think those were some of the more, the favorite <laughs> things out of everybody that showed up was um, uh, things they got, they got to do with their hands. And just, yeah. I think a lot of the younger generation too, um, they kind of forget that, oh my gosh, I can do all these incredible things with my hands and my own uh, artistic design rather than on my phone or looking at, you know, a screen. Um, so what were some of the first things that you started doing uh, that exactly. kind of made you feel like, oh, my gosh, this is, I can be good at this? <laughs> Do you remember any of those things when you first started? Um, well, my my grandmother used to crochet and um, and it was something that I watched her do for many, many years. Um, it was something that I decided to learn on my own and I just picked it up quite easily um, and it was, and, and when I created this beautiful item and it's not, as I said, it's not just an item, it, it, it almost becomes an heirloom at times for like baby blankets and um, little baby sweaters and those kinds of things. Um, I know I certainly still have all the items that, um, you know, my grandmother made me. So, uh, <laughs> so that's basically where I got my start. Um, and then, then you see all of, you know, the, the, the decor and the wood items in the, um, and there's so many different outlets that you can do. There's, there's painting and pottery and um, pretty much anything, glass etching. There's, there's so many different avenues you can go down with crafting. Um, so it's, you know, there's so many um, different things to try and, um, and it does spark creativity. Um, I, my, some of my favorite people are the people who say, I'm not creative at all. And I pretty much <laughs> tell them, no, 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 you just wait, I'll, I'll show you, you have it in you. We just need to pull it out <laughs> kind of thing. So um, yeah, and, and crafting is something that brings people together. Um, it's a, it's just a fun thing. Um, you know, we, we all like to get together as a group and, and paint and do, um, some sort of crafting activity. So, um, so it's, it's a nice thing to do with friends and just something different. Oh, I love all that. Now, so you, uh, try to unpack some of that. Is that what you see most common is, uh, do you see a lot of people just actively that are good and just are seeking things? Or do you see a lot of the people that are just trying things new? Uh, they've never really done anything like this. And all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, this is actually fun. Do you see a lot of that? <laughs> I, I see a lot of everybody, to be quite honest. Um, I, I get the people who will put every detail in there 
and really analyze it and really um, figure out five, 25 different colors they want to put on something. And then there's another person who um, decides that one, one color will work for them. And that's part of their creativity as well. Um, it, so there's a lot of people who, um, who, who, as I said, say they, they aren't creative at all. And I, and I never, ever believe that you have creativity in everything that you do. Um, in every decision that you make and, and, you know, that's, that's of your own doing, um, it's creativity is in everyone basically. And, um, and those who say that they're, they're not creative at all. I, I always say, no, <laughs> you, you really are. Um, so you get all kinds of, of people who, who really, okay. um, take their time and, and do something. And then there's other people who just, you know, sort of do you know, a little bit and really get into it that way. Got it. All right. And then so, they want uh, to do more. Usually um, a lot of people just have fun. So, so online craft, uh, fair Haven, where, where did you, where'd that name come from? I like it. <laughs> Was that you? Um, I, I just thought that it, you know, it's a great support for other artists and crafters. Um, and Haven sort of, you know, <laughs> is a, um, a, a comfortable place. It's a, you know, it's a great place to be. It, it denotes a happy place to me in, in, in that way. So, um, and a lot of the craft fairs at the time were being, were being canceled. So um, mm -hmm. we certainly needed another outlet um, for people to show, show off their items and sell their items in another marketplace of some sort. Um, so, I, I wanted to start something that would support other artists and crafters and give them another way to sell their items okay. because there's so many beautiful, unique items out there to sell um, that, um, you know, it, you're not going to find them in like the, the stores. And so, yeah. you know, they needed another place to put them, I guess. And, and with the, and the craft fairs used to be like the bread and butter usually of, of a lot of artists and crafters. So, um, so it's, it's a, it's another way for them to showcase their items, which I, I love supporting anybody, um, who wants to do that as well. Yeah. I love it. Now I've noticed down in like Rehoboth and Dewey, uh, Bethany beach, Fenwick, uh, I, I see like a rising artist community where, um, I know that they put a pause on some stuff this last year, but I think once things start opening up again, um, I'll de we'll definitely see, uh, more, uh, fairs or craft shows or like a lot of the boardwalks have a lot of uh, shows even mm -hmm. um, farther inland a little bit now the craft shows do you, do you have what are mm -hmm. some things that people don't know about uh, craft shows <laughs> you got any like secret stuff that uh, anybody doesn't know about what goes on behind the scenes um Mostly that that every artist that's out there, if they're putting their stuff out there, they love what they've made. They're not just making it to make <laughs> it. They're putting a piece of themselves out there, basically. Hmm. Um, so it's it's a lot of heart and soul and time and effort and materials. I mean, picking out the right materials. It's a lot of um, it, it's a lot of preparation is basically mm. what it is. Um, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of themselves that they're putting out there. It's their legacy almost. Wow. So that's something you don't think about. So a lot of times when we come up to the craft shows or, um, you know, any of the places that the vendors are kind of have their spaces. Uh, so some of the, you're, what you're saying is the stuff that you see out there, it's not just stuff that they're trying to sell to make a living. They're just, this is stuff that people are actually really passionate about and just love what they're doing and have taken that leap of, you know what, I'm going to do this and I'm going to um, have fun what I'm doing and just really love it. So when you walk up to look at something, you're really looking at something that these people, these artists have like poured their heart and soul into, um, which makes it more special, right? So now you have a space where these uh, artists can have um, – so you can go to one place on your site and you can either. Uh, so tell me what happens when somebody goes to your site, they can either set up, Hey, I want to do this uh, craft or this event or buy something to make, 
or they can get events hosted and the artists can sell some of their work too. Is that, you have all of that going on, right? Yeah, basically um, the, the artists themselves have their space on the website basically. Okay. And it's, they, they get to showcase six of their items. Um, so there's six photos and they have a small bio as well. Um, a little description of the item if they wanted to do that as well. Um, the actual photos are linked to their website. So when um, a buyer comes to the website, they can certainly click on those photos okay. and it will lead directly to the artist's website um, for them to purchase directly from them. Well, wow, so you're like the hub of all the artists in the area. And then also um, if somebody's interested in saying, hey, I really want to have an event or something, they can reach out to you and you can help them with that. Do you do those types of things too? Um, or they at the, it's an ongoing thing. So it's every single month. Um, we change artists every single month on the website. Oh, wow. Um, and then also the one thing that, the, that I'm doing as well is I'm setting up to where they can also just be a part of a directory if they want it to be, where they would be listed um, mm -hmm. with their name and address and what crafts they offer um, as well. And it's, and it's, you know, a, a line item within the, the website and people can certainly search for their items that way as well. All right. I love it. And so tell me a little bit about uh, some of these um, awards and stuff that you've gotten. How did that uh, all come about? <laughs> so you were featured in the Delaware today. Um, and well, I, yeah, it, it was um, very exciting. Um, I was featured in Delaware today. She actually had reached out to me and, um, and asked me if I wanted to be a part of um, an article that she was doing about five um, women entrepreneurs who um, were making it through, were following their passion through the pandemic and basically, um, you know, really putting out their business and stuff. So, um, you know, I was, I was very, very lucky to um, have been featured in that um because i am passionate about what i do um and yeah so so it was it was just a great thing to to be a part of okay and so in middleton so what uh have you always lived in middleton how did you end up in the 302 area um i i live in middletown and yes i moved here about five years ago, um, I moved here from New Jersey. Um, we were basically just looking for um, a better quality of life and we've found it here in Middletown. Um, and my kids have, have loved it. Um, and we certainly, you know, and I certainly love it too. And I'm glad to be a part of um, this community as well. Um, you know, I joined the Chamber of Commerce and um, have gotten to know so many wonderful people and have come across so many wonderful people um, with my business as well, um, having had done events and that, those kinds of things. Um, so it's, it's definitely a great community to be a part of. And um, I'm glad to be in Delaware and, um, and the, the beaches are wonderful as well. And um, yeah, I couldn't have made a better move. So now you started out in corporate, like New York, right? So hustle, bustle, busy all the time to now Delaware. <laughs> so a lot of people are doing this and I think we're seeing a trend. Yeah. Of, um, yeah. So how did, how did that feel? What, what was it like going from corporate world to small town Delaware? <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's good because after a while, this the city is almost too much. Some at times that it's good to go to a slower paced area just um, to sort of catch your breath. I guess yeah. um, I absolutely love the city. I loved working there. It was great while it lasted, um, and it's I still like going there to visit. But I, you know, I certainly love um, being a part of the slower um, atmosphere. <laughs> All right. And do you have any favorite spots that you like to uh, go? So if someone's visiting or thinking about moving here for the first time, 
as a sure. artist, do you have anywhere um, that you um, that you'd like to go, or do you have any favorite uh, spots that kind of help bring out the artist in you? <laughs> Um, well, up here in Middletown, there's a place called the Gibby, um, which, in, which is an arts and, and cultural center. The Gibby? Um, and there's, I'm sorry? It's called the Gibby? It's called, it's called the Gibby. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and it's, yeah. And, and it's actually, um, it's actually an arts and cultural center. And so there's many artists, um, um, showcase there and there's many items showcased there that I love to go see as well. Um, I know there's a lot of art galleries down in um, Lewis and Rehoboth that I'm looking forward to exploring as well. Um, <laughs> there's uh, I know that they're they're talking about I don't know if it's if it's actually on the schedule um, but there, I know that Lewis and Rehoboth both have arts festivals as well usually um, during the summer which is uh, something that you know, I'd certainly love to do as well. So um, Delaware certainly has its, you know, fair share of good, you know, arts and cultural areas and, and craft fairs and festivals and those kinds of things. So I love to see the celebration of that as well. Yeah, love it. And yeah, so we've been here 10 years and we have made it uh, to most of those uh, craft shows. Um, and like I said earlier, I, th I think there's an uh, up and coming, like huge, like uh, just aspiration or I don't, I'm looking for a good word, uh, uh, passion for art and just that. Yeah. And I, th I think it's really cool to see that happening now. I, I was really into drawing and art when I was younger. And then I feel like there's like this weird stage where you're like, OK, I need to work all the time. And then like you kind of push out into you know, thirties and you're like, okay, uh, let me start doing things, some things I love again. And then <laughs> like, I find myself like looking forward to like, uh, reteaching myself, um, some of the art stuff that I, I, I used to be love doing now. Um, so before we get too much into this, uh, so you're offering a uh, 10% off if someone mentions 302 lifestyle as a coupon code and you have, uh, two websites. So your craftcentral.com now that's for mostly purchasing items and things like that, right? And then we have the online craft fair haven. It's uh, yes, it's yourcraftcentral.com. Um, so so yeah, your yourcraftcentral.com, and um, yes, what I offer there is virtual uh, crochet classes. Um, I, if you happen to be in the Middletown area, I can certainly make arrangements to do an in-person class as well. Um, but I also offer paint parties up here. Um, and there's also crochet items and wood decor items. Um, so, so that, yeah, there's, there's a good amount of, um, items within the website. Great. So I'm excited to and share I, all that. And I hand make everything. And oh, wow. So, yeah, so that those are all my, my items that I, that I certainly create. Now, if somebody wants something special like a happy birthday thing or, um, you know, it's a grandparent's birthday or Christmas present or something, they can put orders in for you to crochet things too? Absolutely. I, I can certainly do a custom crochet item, um, you know, and I, I'm happy to make it to whatever colors, whatever sizes, whatever um, look they're certainly going for. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I'm well versed in crochet, so I'm happy to, I can pretty much make just about anything for them, which <laughs> is a great thing to have. So yeah, it is. So what's the, one of the most unique things that you've ever crocheted or made uh, as an artist? <laughs> um, well, last summer, I, I actually had done, um, I had been eyeballing this one pattern for months. Um, and I finally got the guts to do it, actually. Um, it's, it's a blanket called Sophie's Universe. And... It is the most complicated pattern I have ever done in my career. Um, but I have a thing where I love those complicated patterns because I feel like I want to conquer it, so to speak. I, 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 it's a good challenge for myself and, you know, it keeps my mind sharp and, and, and you certainly learn a lot of things that way as well. So I learned a couple new 
crochet techniques by doing that as well. But um, it's the most gorgeous, beautiful blanket I've ever done. And it took about five weeks to make. And it was about 65 inches by 65 inches. So it was huge. Wow. That's big. Yeah. That's like over five feet. <laughs> okay. So yeah. you threw out some big words there for someone that doesn't know too much about crocheting. So uh, what is the pattern that you were talking about? And now, so what I'm understanding is there's, there's probably like a beginner stage where you have like a basic crochet and then, so what happens after that? You like kind of like move your way up into more complicated uh, patterns. And how does that describe the patterns? What makes them complicated? Uh, because we have like several people here that we know and customers that they have entire rooms full of uh, crocheting items. And I have no idea what all this stuff is. There's even one woman that has like a really big machine that does something. But so I'm so interested now. Tell me about the patterns. What is there like a beginner stage and how do you work your way up? <laughs> oh, sure. With, with anything, there's always a beginner stage. Um, and basically crochet is about six or seven different stitches total, but it's what you do with those stitches that makes the different looks of different things that you can do with it. Um, basically. Um, so there, there is, um, so you start off with your, your basic stitches, obviously. I mean, and even the basic stitches, like a single crochet stitch is, is one of the easiest stitches that you can do. Um, when you say you can stitch. Make a scarf out of that. You can make it. So, so when I'm you sorry? say stitch, you mean uh, a stitch is when something goes over and under and it's holding it together. So that's like a stitch, right? <laughs> yeah, you use your hook to sort of weave the, the yarn okay. to create a certain look is basically right. the idea. All right. And so, we'll put up, uh, um, if, was, so, yeah. if you, anybody's watching the video right now, we'll put up some images of some of these uh, uh, basic patterns or stitching. And now you mentioned a complicated one. What was the name of that again? Um, the complicated pattern that I had done was called Sophie's Universe. Um, <laughs> and basically that had a lot of um, stitches where there, you know, there was, they have things called a crab stitch. There's another stitch called um, a front post double crochet. There's all, all of these different um, advanced stitches that it had that that weaved it into this beautiful beautiful blanket that it turned out to be um so you know and i'll certainly you know show you yeah a we'll, we'll put up a picture well. but it's uh it it's it's an advanced pattern um and it challenged me but i was so happy to do it because <laughs> i've learned i learned a lot from it as well and i'm constantly learning too mm. Um, because there's so many different patterns out there and there's so many creative artists who, who put out those patterns um, for all of us to enjoy and try and create things ourselves. So, wow. um, so, so yeah, so it's, a, it's definitely a great thing to challenge yourself. So st just starting out though, what, what's the expected time frame? Um, if let's just say me, I want to try crocheting. Uh, where would I start to begin? Well, obviously I'd reach out to you and <laughs> ask for your help and have you give me some uh maybe like a kit or um, something that would help me with this but if i am starting out what's the expected time frame um for practicing or like how long is the estimated like first i, I would think people start with probably what like coffee ho uh, coffee uh what are they called um in between the coasters <laughs> what, what do people coasters. normally start with Um, you could start with pot holders, coasters, um, a, a very easy scarf. Mm. Um, you can do even a blanket in, in like some of the easiest stitches that there is. Um, mm. So, I mean, you can, you could pretty much start with anything. Um, the, if it's, if you're using the basic stitches and you're, and you're doing a blanket, it'll ob obviously take longer. Um, but it, it's still, it's still something you could mm. definitely do. 
um, there's, there's certainly so many options um, that you can do as well. I mean, just even, even like a square could be like something that is, um, is like a piece of art that you, that you can hang and those kinds of things. So, um, so yeah, so you, you have, you have so many options, even with the basic stitches. Hmm. Um, and then you can certainly build on those skills from there. Um, you know, and, and yes, I do offer a kit as well when you come to my class. So, um, <laughs> now do you challenge yourself? It basically to put... has everything that you would need, um, to get started. Okay, cool. Now do you challenge yourself to, I'm um, sorry. Do, do you challenge yourself to put like, uh, you know how you can add like a different color and like you make like pictures out of the uh the different color threads and so forth like on the blankets like that's that's all of it right um you do all that stuff <laughs> yeah really yeah you cer certainly switching colors is is a part of you know learning crochet as well um what's what's good as well now too is that sometimes you don't even need to do that because there is yarn that is act that actually have you heard of float therapy Holy cow, this is like the biggest secret in America. <laughs> I think the world. Famous people, athletes, all these people are doing f float therapy. And it's called Urban Float in Rehoboth. You can go to urbanfloat.com, uh, click on Rehoboth, and check out these guys. You're basically sitting on 1,200 pounds of Epsom salt. Everything just feels so amazing. And you're on this weightless, de-stressing um, pod for an hour. I love it. You get a discount uh, your first time. You can also uh, let them know that you're from 302 Lifestyle. Check them out, guys. Sponsored by Urban Float. Okay, guys. Uh, so we missed uh, the last half of this because of our internet went out. So I am just going to recap for a second here. Uh, Kathy had went over um, uh, all of her uh, favorite uh, crocheting. Starting at the beginning, we had recapped through the beginning of this show, uh, talking about uh, uh, moving your way up to different levels and her favorite uh, one that she has done that was very complicated. Then we started moving into um, uh, sharing with you guys uh, how to get a hold of her. So we have all the links down below. I think we went through all that. And then finally, I think you guys just missed the part where uh, I did the, um, uh, the lightning round. So Kathy, I'm sorry to do this to you. <laughs> the recording had stopped. That's I'm going to okay. ask you one more time, okay? Uh, so Kathy, okay. what is your favorite book, tool, software, or video? And I think you told me your favorite one is... <laughs> you Are a Badass yes. by J Jen Sincero. <laughs> um, that it's a gr it's a great book. It's very inspiring, um, and yeah, it helps you to believe in yourself a lot more. So it's definitely a great read. Definitely love it. Okay, and second question was, uh, what is your favorite place to eat? Which you told an excellent answer. <laughs> um, my favorite place to eat is Luna's in Middletown. Um, they have pizza that tastes very much like Jersey pizza. And that's the first thing that you look for when you move down here is okay, which places <laughs> yeah. have the best pizza. Um, so that, that would be my favorite um, because it has the, the best pizza as close to home. Now, when I think of Jersey pizza, I think of the thin crust, uh, lots of sauce and cheese. Is that, is it, it's a thinner crust, not, not, not that real thick pizza, right? It's not thick, thick, no. Uh, uh, it and you know, it's just got that um, lots of grease, that good tomatoey <laughs> flavor and good mozzarella. It's ju it's just a good combination. Sounds good. All right, and finally, I asked, uh, "What is one question I should have asked you?" And what's your answer? And um, we got into what's 2021 look like. 2021 was looking great. Um, I'm so looking forward to having events and having people come and do crafts and um, painting parties and um, everything that I can do for the young and the old and, um, you know, <laughs> give them, give them all different kinds of crafty projects to enjoy. Sounds good. Now, um, and I mentioned, I know there's a lot of people uh, that we have met and that are in our community that do a lot of uh, crafts and knitting and uh, crocheting. Uh, a lot of painters 
on the show here. So if you guys are trying to get a hold of Kathy, like I said, we're going to put the links down below. Check out her social media, um, also her websites, and uh, get in touch with her so we can uh, keep growing this artist community. And I think just in general, people and kids just wanting to do other things and sit around watching TV or um, and just interacting with people, which is much needed after this pandemic. Yeah, it's it's definitely a great thing to do to get together and and just enjoy an activity together. So, yeah, so definitely right. a great thing for groups. So if you guys are interested, uh, reach out to her, go on the site. Uh, she has some uh, beginners uh, kits and stuff available to uh, get you guys going and uh, look forward to having you on soon. Uh, maybe if there's a craft show or something, we can get back together and uh, meet up at one of these uh, shows and, and, and have some fun, huh? All right. Absolutely. Um, and I just wanted to mention really quick that I am going to be at the Whitehall Festival here in Middletown if you wanted to come by and see my table. Oh, wait, when is that one? I didn't see it on your the Whitehall Festival, right? That one is on April 25th. Okay, April 25th. Yeah, let's get that on the show. Let me pick a note here. April 25th. And I think one of the things that I love about uh, crocheting, my I grew up with three sisters and a mom, and they just love doing different crafts and different things. And so we went through about two years where in my house, we had all kinds of crocheting going on. <laughs> and my sisters were making like all kinds of scarves and blankets and coasters and pretty much everything you can think of in the beginning stages of. And so it was just really neat seeing how quickly, like once you got good at it, um, putting together stuff and then also using that as a gift for somebody for Christmas or something, it just, it has more of a special place because mm -hmm. it came from you. It's personalized. You know, you can even like crochet your name in it and everything else. Um, I think it's really cool to be a part of something like that and a way for um, families to have stuff that they can pass down to each other. Uh, really awesome, Kathy, that you're doing this. So, Absolutely. Um, it's, it's something that uh, it comes from my heart. Um, I put, I put my heart into everything that I make. Um, and if I give you something as a handmade gift or anybody gives you something as a handmade gift, they're truly giving you a piece of themselves. Yeah. Um, and I, I know I still have, um, blankets that, that were made for me and my children and that kind of thing that, that I will never get rid of just because they're just so beautiful. And it was made from the heart. Um, yeah. and they are heirlooms. Um, for families to enjoy for many years and to pass on to their kids. So, um, you know, so it's great to have something like to pass on um, to yeah. other generations as well. Yeah. And those blankets are the most comfortable blankets, like the mermaid blanket that you held up. It looks so comfortable. Like you could just cuddle up inside it and just pass out on the couch. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's definitely a <laughs> snuggly kind of thing and nice and warm and yeah, absolutely. For those of you that can't see uh, the video, if you're on the podcast um, or if you did see it on the YouTube video, uh, Kathy held up a amazing mermaid uh, blanket basically that is handmade. So if you guys are looking for any unique things like that or for somebody uh, reach out to Kathy, check out the website, go to their social media guys. Thank you for living the 302 lifestyle. And Kathy, thank you for being on today <laughs> and repeating ourselves. <laughs> it, it was great being here. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Wish you could spend more time having fun and less time with chores? Go to 302beachtalk.com to get $20 off a home cleaning. You'll be entered to win a completely free cleaning. Eat, play, serve. Sponsored by That Guy with a Broom.